sunrise over the mountains on the final day. Rigged up the Mojo Bass fly with some top water, baby, Dahlberg divers. Got that popper tied up from the tutorial. Ready to go. We're gonna hit some early morning. First light, top water largemouth. What's going on everybody? I'm Gunner here. I am currently in Mexico with Nomadic Waters. We're staying at the Anglers Inn Lodge. I am lakeside at Lake Picachos. This is part two of a deer hair video. I just showed you guys how to stack deer hair. Now, it's a bit windy, but I think it came out pretty good. Uh, also, I kind of boshed the trim job a little bit. We'll see if the bass like it tomorrow. I've never tried to sh shape an actual popper head before, but Regardless, it doesn't really matter. So that's how you stack deer here. If you want to check it out, you can follow the link right here. If you ever want to know how to put one color on the bottom, another color on top, a stack inside of a stack, that's what I'm talking about. Stacking deer here, making it tight, making it buoyant. Uh, this video, I want to show you the counterpart, which is spinning deer here. And basically, I'm going to just do all white, and I'm going to spin a Dahlberg diver. Uh, the nice thing about spinning, a little bit simpler, a little bit easier, uh, very fast way to do basically a, a fly um, and yeah the pros and cons you're gonna have to fish them and see which one you like whether you want more buoyancy or less buoyancy or more bubble trails or if you just want speed or if you don't want it super tight or if super tight's harder to cast like whatever you find uh, I'm just here to show you the technique um, so I'm gonna teach you how to spin deer here uh, I already did the tail the tail really doesn't matter you guys do you uh, I'm just making a little bait fish diver, so I just put on basically a bucktail, flash boo, and hackle deceiver tail. Uh, but the thing is, is you want that tail stacked right at the back, and you want to stack it all in one spot. You want to make sure that thread is attached to that hook so that you create a big bump in the back to pack the hair against so that you can make the head fairly tight and fill up that space. And then I just have a thread, uh, a little base down where I'm going to stack my deer hair. I am currently, because I'm in the deer hair section, using... 150 strand GSP, gel spun plastic basically. It's the strongest thread you're gonna find. 150 and 200 are the most forgiving to do deer hair work with because they won't cut the deer hair if you pull ridiculously hard. 100 sometimes will cut right through it. For the tail I used heavy mono because I love 8,000ths of an inch mono. You can also spin a whole head by the way with mono because it is that strong. So the hair is just hair. Uh, this is deer belly hair. Basically, all bass bugs are made from belly hair. Uh, coarser, ton of trapped air, but it's rawhide, really colicky. colicky. Uh, it's hard to find premium hair, so you want to grade it yourself. You want to go to the shop, check it out. Try to get it as long, as straight, with a good degree of flair to it. So you just learn that just by touching it, but it should have a little bit of crinkle wave to it. Basically, I'm going to pinch off as much as I can humanly handle in my fingers. I'm going to cut it straight off the hide. I'm going to take those tips and spin them. This is going to free out all of this garbage that's trapped against the hide that the deers use to insulate themselves. I'm going to pack the first stack towards the tips to kind of even up the tips here a little bit. So I'm just kind of dropping it in my hand. It's not as easy as it sounds, but I'm just trying to even up those tips so you can see my butts are kind of uneven now and I'm just going to even those up. And then for everything forward, we'll, we'll do it the other, other way around. But what you're gonna do is you're just gonna lay this on that hook shank about 50-50. So I'm gonna catch my thread right in the, the midpoint of that. Completely loose, completely loosey-goosey. Add just a little tension. Same thread path, same thread path. And every time it just gets a little tighter. Now, there's no trick to spinning hair other than you want it even. 
that's the only trick. So as long as you get it even, you're in a happy place. So what I like to do is take my thumb, support your, your hook eye, and I just put my thumb right on top. And it pushes that hair all the way around. And you can just kind of pinch this. You can start to spin it. Just pinch it, pinch it, pinch it, pinch it. And every time you pinch hair, it has to run away from the pressure. And if you pinch on all sides evenly enough, it'll just even itself out. And now as you go and you really lock that in place, the goal is that your density, the hair, the amount of hair on each side of the hook is perfectly even. So now I'm pulling, I'm just reefing on that, and it's not slippage. There's no slippage, the hair's not rotating at all. I can take my fingers, pack that back pretty good and hard. I'm gonna lock that in, just wiggle it through the hair, catch the shank, and put down another base here. And then something you can do to just help control it, you just put just a dab of glue kind of right there at the back and help keep some of that other hair out of the way. And I'm just gonna do all white, because I like fishing white, because I like seeing white. In the water, it's easy to track with your eyes, and it's a bait fish pattern. Is this thing recording? Am I recording? I am recording. Good. I'm going to do the exact same thing I just did, minus the wind. <clears throat> you hear me? Minus the wind. <laughs> but this time, I'm going to make sure those butts are even, because I don't need the tips anymore for anything. And I'll just cut those tips flush so I got a nice square edge. Now, it's kind of hard to get this in place, but if you just hold everything back, that little hand transfer is not as easy as it looks, but look, check this out. When I pull my loose thread out, I come in with slack, and I might look how tight I am to that hook shank. My bobbin nose is touching it, touching it, so that my thread always goes in the same place, and I don't trap anything under here trying to catch all that. And I'll just push, and I'm drawn with my bobbin as I manipulate the hair. Look how sloppy this is. It's not some tricky thing. It's not supposed to be a scam. Cool. I pulled so hard I cut some of my deer hair. You see that? I'm just going to pack that back. Pack it back, pack it back, pack it back. Ideally, I wouldn't have pulled that hard, especially after talking about how great 150 strand GSP is. But this is not an ideal situation. It's about teaching you how to spin hair. <laughs> I'm just going to use a little bit more glue just to lock that in, keep it out of my way as much as I can. And this process of, of spinning, it just rinse and repeats itself until you've filled up that shank. I'm going to shake this guy like a Dahlberg diver, uh, but basically for doing any shaping work, you just want to take a box. If you can, if you can make a box, you can kind of scale it down from there and then practice, 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 right? Because I botched the first one, which I've never done before, and I've never practiced it. <laughs> and all you got to do really uh, to set your, your horizon is make the bottom of the box flat, right? So you got to come in, use your hook eye, use your, your hook bend. I can see everything. I know where perpendicular is and I can just draw that blade down the hair. Now, when I say draw the blade, don't just put it flat against the hair and push, but hold it at a slight angle, 45, 30 degrees, and every time you push into that hair, pull it towards yourself and draw it, physically draw it. You want it to cut. 
You don't want it to just catch and push and dig. You want it to cut. Make sure that you got plenty of hook gap on that. Basically you want to be as tight to that hook shank as you can without cutting your thread. Then I'm going to clean up my kind of collar area. That is a pretty legit Dahlberg diver head that took three minutes to trim. That's awesome. Just three minutes to trim that. All right, guys, I'm going to get out of the wind here, take a little afternoon siesta before we go back out on the lake as the wind dies down in the evening. Thanks for watching. I hope that this little two part series on stacking and spinning and and really just kind of going slow and making mistakes and I, ho I hope it makes it feel accessible, no longer intimidating, uh, and that if you just practice those two patterns and you do them five or six times, one, by the sixth time they'll probably be pretty good, and two, you'll be able to use deer hair wherever you want. If you want to do a muddler head or a zoo cuckoo head or a big deer hair collar on a sex dungeon, it will come very natural because you've put the time in to practice it. So I hope that helps you out, hope it's accessible, and take it out on the water and stick a pig old ditch pickle largemouth. See you guys.